guys, it's Carl Brown from GuitarLessons365.com and man, do I have a metal classic for you guys today. We are going to learn how to do South of Heaven by Slayer. Uh, now this has got some instantly recognizable riffs in it. We're going to go through all of them, all through the guitar parts, which are not that difficult to play. Um, and then we're going to also carry, uh, cover both of those guitar solos, which are just nuts. Uh, so we're going to get pretty close to those, but it's impossible to get note for note. But I uh, hope you guys are joining along. Now, before I get into it, please subscribe to the channel. If you have not already, you can ring the notification bell. It kind of helps uh, kind of support the lessons, if you, especially if you watch them. That really helps. Um, and if you really want to support what I do here, you're going to see a link to my Guitar Academy in the description. Um, that's how I stay alive. That's how I support myself. You'll see a link to it. It's a GL365 Academy that contains all my guitar courses. I'm there live with Academy members every weekend. You get full access to all of my courses with just one subscription across all major app platforms from all the mobile app platforms to TV app platforms, um, all with just one subscription. So please check it out. Now let's jump into the track. I am going to, we're, we're two nine and a half step, first of all. So every string two down to E down to E flat, E down to A flat. E flat, G flat, E flat, E flat. I'll put that in the description as well, but it's just two nine and a half step, no big deal. Um, and then we have these these riffs that just kind of just the de demonic riff uh, that everybody knows. <laughs> All right, so we have kind of a high harmony line and a low harmony line. When you first, when this hear it enter, you hear the higher harmony line higher up in the mix. So that's more prominent. The lower harmony line is actually going with it as well. Um, so I'm gonna show you both of these just for the intro. And also in the intro, you're gonna have a few other things. One, you're gonna hear just like this, kind of this E power chord hit, kind of low being heard underneath everything. So. Right there, right when the riff starts over each time, you'll hear that. Um, so you're hearing that, but the high harmony part I'll show you first, since that's the first thing you hear the most when he first starts the, the, the thing. All right, so we start the riff with the open E string, low E, then the seventh fret there on the A. Then we play 9, 10 on the D. You hear kind of muting those first few notes. Then we play, after that 9, 10 on the D, go over to the ninth fret there on the G. Then back to the 10th fret there on the D string. Then to the 8th fret on the G. So it is. Now you can play some vibrato on the high notes. That's always fun. So, so we have this 9, back to that 10. Then to the 8 on the G string. Then you're gonna change the note on the D string to the 9th fret. Then over to the 7th fret on the G. So. Then the 8th fret there on the D string. Then play 7, 6 on the G. So it is. Alright, and then the second time through the riff, we're just gonna put a trill at the end of it. Instead of doing this, that 7 6, when you hit that A on the 8 on the um, D string, just jump over here and instead of just doing that, you're gonna go over to the 6 and just do a trill between that 6 and 7 on the G. So this. So all together, uh, uh, the riff basically is the, the thing played twice. It's got a different ending each time. All right, then you repeat all that. All right, so, so underneath that, we have the lower harmony part, much lower in the mix. Uh, and just a little bit, the lower harmony part becomes the main riff, and you don't really hear the higher harmony part. Um, so that lower harmony that's going along with it. Very, very, 
very similar. First of all, you're, you're gonna go over to the E and the A string instead of playing the A and the D. So just basically move up a string. And it's gonna be, the, the main difference between, beyond that is you play the open E, and then the seventh fret there on the E string. So zero, seven on the low E, and then the seventh fret there on the A. And then from there, the riff is the same, except everything's up a string. So starting on the A string. So it's the same. Just the same frets, just moved up a string. Uh, so it's just those very few notes. And then it's the same. Same trill at the end. Now, over this, you're also going to hear this section. You're going to hear some harmonics come in over it. So there's really kind of like four guitars going here. So you can kind of choose which one you want to do. Um, I think basically what they do when I see them play live a lot, they're, the live videos, they do the lower harmony part. Jet Terry King, King plays that. And then you have a... And then you'll hear that later on. I'll add the high harmony, but that's not like that on their actual recording, so that's what we're covering here. Uh, but anyway, so you do hear these harmonics there if you want to do those as well. So these harmonics. So it's just a 12th fret harmonic on the G and the B, on the B string and the high E. And then what he does, he hits the harmonic at the seventh fret on the high E string while, while also hitting the open B string. Now that open B string might be heard just from uh, the resonance because you have this B ringing. It could cause this sort of very loud amp to kind of, the open B string just kind of sympathetically ring. Um, or you can just hit it. But you need the harmonic and that slightly the open B string ring in as well. And then the harmonic of the fifth fret on the B and high E. So kind of hear those over that intro as well. All right, and then um, we uh, basically, you know, like I said, it, the low harmony part becomes the dominant riff while we kind of start doing this. With, got that going with it. And then the vocals come in, and it's the same riff there. Uh, the same low harmony part when the vocals first come in, that first verse. We have that going. Uh, but we have that underneath it, the E power chords are played in eighth notes. So just kind of, it's a little bit different rhythm, so I'll let them uh, um, just kind of uh, ring. And then it goes back to the harmony riff, which is the harmony riff is the low harmony and the high harmony played together. All right, so that's, we've covered both of those before. And then we have this little, I call it a transition riff before we get to the first real, real verse. Looks like this. So that's kind of this. So I hit the open E power chord, kind of again, this that feel going just all downstrokes. Then you're gonna come up here and hit the the, the melody is gonna be the tenth fret there on the A, eight, seven. So you're gonna keep the low E going underneath each one of those. Then you go back to the tenth fret. And the first time he comes back and he grabs this F power chord, the first fret hits a couple of hits on that. So it looks like this. But then as he, he plays the next two times through, he's gonna do that F an octave higher in the eighth fret of the A, like this. And then the fourth time through, you can go back to the F down to the first fret. I'm sorry. 
All right, and then here we get to the uh, verse, which is the main kind of heavy verse riff, uh, which looks like this. <laughs> So that starts with a kind of a quick little, little gallop. So a quick little down, up, down. So we have this, then after the gallop, you just steady rhythm. So at this, the power chord hit at the third fret on the low E string. So with this, a couple more hits on the low E string. First fret, power chord hit once. The open E, so this. And then we do the uh, kind of gallop again, kind of starting to riff over. Except when we get to the F the second time through, you're gonna hold it. So we have this all together. Hold the P. From there, we get to this pre-chorus riff. It's kind of, there's one little part of it that's really hard to hear, where you, you can tell he's going up to the sixth fret, but you can't tell if he's just kind of sliding down or just doing things. When I, I see Jeff Hanneman, uh, when he played it live, it seemed like he did a little quick little um, thing on it that's kind of almost indecipherable on the recording, but I believe that's what he's doing. If you watch the videos from like the late 80s, early 90s, when they're really kind of playing this stuff pretty close to the album, that's what they're doing. So I'm gonna stick with that. So it looks like this. All right, so that starts, it's kind of get the gallop again off an F sharp here, power chord off the low, the second fret of the low E string. Obviously it's an F now because of the tuning, but we'll just call it F sharp. So it's this kind of quick little gallop, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down. And then here's that little part. It almost sounds like you can hear him start something here at the sixth fret. Um, uh, almost sounds like he's sliding down like that. But when you see them play it live, I don't see a lot of do it now, but back in the day, you, you see a quick little move where they just kind of go six, four, three on the low E string. You really, I was just that kind of same gallop feel. Then you go back to the gallops here at the sixth fret, I mean, sorry, second fret there, and then come up and grab that G power chord and hold it, which is at the third fret. So we have this. All right, then we start over again. And then instead of doing this ending, at the end of it, we're gonna come up here and grab, which is the sixth fret power chord, heavily palm muted. Then three, two, one. So all together. All right, then uh, at this part of the song, at least, it doesn't go to the chorus. Uh, that's the pre-chorus, but it goes back to the harmony riff and then goes back into that little transition riff. That's played slightly different. I think it's mostly the, uh, the second time you hear that transition riff, I think it's shorter. And they're just kind of playing the F here instead of down here. And then it goes back into the same verse and the same pre-chorus, but then this time out of the pre-chorus, it actually goes to the chorus, which is this. All right, so let me preface this by saying uh, that little ending, it's played separately. Uh, so each guy is gonna grab one of those notes. They don't play it like I just did. I kind of put them together. They both play this part though. So with this kind of open E hits and then power chord at the fourth fret of the low E and then down to the third fret. And then a couple more hits and then three, two power chord. So with this. 
Then you come back down, the more the E power chord hits. And then one of them will jump up here and grab seven, eight on the A. So this. And the other one's gonna grab six, seven on the D. So you can put those together if you'd like, if you just the one guitar band. All right, that takes us to solo number one. This was played by Kerry King. Now, um, we have a rhythm underneath that first, which I'll show you, it looks like this. So that's what's going on underneath this first solo. So it's just a down up, down up on the low E string. Then the fourth fret power chord there on the low E. Then back to down up, down up on the um, low E to the third fret power chord. And then uh, we're gonna basically 12 hits on the low E into the first fret power chord. So we have this. All right, so let me go through the solo. Now, like I mentioned earlier, it's really hard to get these things note for note. Um, they, they both have kind of really chaotic soloing styles. So um, they, they do, especially in the early stuff, they do kind of do a pretty good job of matching what's on the recording. Um, so I'm going to go through carry solo and we'll make it sound kind of like it, but like I said, it's not going to be completely note for note. So here we go. So, now what is going on here? We're gonna start here with, kind of sounds like as the solo is getting ready to come in, he's doing this like, just kind of grabbing like a 14 foot across the G, B, and the D. Just kind of picking and bend it towards the floor. Jeff Hanneman is gonna start his solo pretty much the same way too. And then we're, he's gonna slide into the, the uh, 14th fret there on the D string. You can hit that pinch harmonic, so you can get that at the uh, 13th fret there on the G string. I'm actually right in between these bridge and neck pickup. That's where I found it. And then back into the slide into the uh, 14th fret on the D. And then we have the hit that a couple times then. So that's kind of sliding up the G string to about that 13th fret again, and then we have. This, 17, 15, 14 on the B. Over to the high E string now, which is the 15th fret a couple times, then 17, uh, 18, then 17. I'm gonna slide that down. Then, so slides into the uh, 19th fret there on the high E string, and then uh, some bends at the 20th, 22nd fret, I'm sorry. And then we have this. Yeah, like that. So we have uh, 19 there on the high E string, and then 24, 20, 2, then 21, and 19. So that's after you. After you do the bends, then you do that. So you you pick that note and go 24, 22, 21, back to the 19. And then you're going to play 21, 22, back to 21. Over to uh, 22, 21, 19 on the B string. Then go over to the 21st fret on the G. 
Back to that 19 on the B and back to the 21st fret there. Luke. Then here, when you see him playing live, he kind of does a full kind of a, a Randy Rhodes deal, um, but on the recording, he's not quite doing that. It's a he's kind of more playing more of a tremolo picked thing. Um, so if you see him do this, which is what actually Jeff Henneman is doing at the beginning of his solo, um, you're, it's, you know, he's, he's doing that now, but on the recording, it's more kind of a tremolo picking from the D, the 12th fret on the D to the 14, and the same thing on the D. And then when he gets to the B string, he's over on the 12th fret there, and he's gonna do this. He's gonna pull off 14 to 12, and then 15 to 12. And do a, a bend at the 15th fret on the high E. All right, from there we have this little chromatic thing. So that can start at the 14th fret on the high E string. And then what you do is just go 17, 16, 15, and then move it up one fret, 18, 17, 16, then 19, 18, 17. He kind of goes up until he gets all the way up to the 22nd fret. And he does a bend there. And then here you hear just kind of a little work. He kind of, he's kind of just doing like a, it sounds like he's open D, hammer five, seven, pull back off the five, pull up, open D. He's kind of, kind of do that thing back and forth. And then do a, some pinch harmonics, which the main harmonic here is at the fourth fret on the B. I like to hit the G, uh, fourth fret harmonic with it. That's what you hear at the very end of the solo there. All right, so then we go out of that solo into uh, the same verse, the same pre-chorus, and the same chorus, which then takes us to solo number two, which is Jeff Henneman's solo. Um, so there's a different rhythm under this as well. So let me play that for you real quick, and then we'll get to the actual solo. All right, so this is similar to the verse, I mean, I'm sorry, the chorus of the song. So we, we got that, that going on. So we have the like, that fourth fret to the third fret, and then the three to two power chord. So it's the same thing, but instead of before when we were doing, kind of eighth notes around it, we're gonna do 16th notes around it. And there's uh, that, that's basically the whole riff. He doesn't do any kind of endings to it. So you do that riff, and on the sixth time through, when you get to get to the uh, second fret there, that's when you're gonna kind of just kind of chug on that. That F sharp into the uh, E power chord to kind of let feedback out for the, the rest of the track. All right, so let's get to the actual solo itself. Like I said, this kind of stuff is crazy, so it's not going to be exact, but uh, we'll make it sound similar. So it looks like this. Crazy. All right, so it kind of starts with that same. Just kind of crazy noise. Just holding the 14th fret across the D, G, and the B. And then we started Terry King's, but he holds it longer. 
All right, we're gonna start this uh, with kind of like a, a Randy Rose type thing after the little. We have this. So that much of it stays pentatonic, and that, so that lick is just kind of 15, 12, 15 on the low E. And then 12 on the A, back to 15 on the low E, back to 12 on the A. And we kind of continue that lick, but through the E minor pentatonic. So when we get up here, to the uh, 14th fret now on the A. Same 14, 12, 14, and then over to 12 on the D. 14 on the A, and then back to the 12 on the D. So it's the same lick, but just taken through the scale. Then we do it again, starting from the D string. So just across that E minor pentatonic. Then we get, we're gonna get to the 14, 12, 14 on, on the uh, G. And that 12 on the B, 14 on the G, back to so the same lick. Now when he gets to the B string, I'll add a minor six and a minor second in there, making it kind of like a, a, um, a Phrygian. So, so, so it just kind of goes up 12, 13, on the B, then back 12, 13, 15. And then, and then same thing on the high E. And then come back down, 15, 13, 12 on the B, over to 14 on the G, so. So I'm kind of just messing around with those guys. You can kind of actually get a talk. You can go that 13, 12, 13, 12, over to 15 on the B, back up. Kind of that Phrygian sound, he's kind of milking it. Now we're gonna resolve it down to the 14th fret there on the G. Like I said, this is not kind of like an exact, do it exactly what he's doing. It sounds like that. And then we're gonna go up. It kind of comes up here to 14 and plays 14, 15, 17 on the A and the D. And um, into the uh, 14, 16, 17 on the G. Now when you get to the 15 on the B string, you're going to do this. So it's kind of like one of those little Chuck Berry things. You know Chuck Berry was a huge influence on Slayer, did you? But it's a it's a bend at the the 17th fret there on the G string into that bend, the the 15th fret there on the B. So it's kind of a unison. So he does that like four times. So out of this, there's a quick pull off from 18 to 15 on the on the. B string, and then it sounds like he kind of goes, kind of grabs the 17th fret on the G and the 18th on the B, and just hit those, and just kind of some bar dives off of it. Like I said, it's just chaos at this point. And then you're gonna slide, slide into the 19th fret there on the B, and then uh, bend at the 22nd fret. And then, then what he does then from it is just, he's kind of pulling off, kind of doing a slow trill from 22 down to 19 on the B string. And he hits that, kind of just the trim bar ways you would. And then you're going to grab the uh, 15th fret on the D and the G. Another bar dive, and then into the 17th fret bend of the G string to end the solo. And that is it. And like I said, the song just kind of ends on that note, and like the, the chord just kind of ringing out and just feeding back for quite a while. But um, anyway, that's it. That's South of Heaven. It's got some classic riffs and crazy solos. 
Um, and uh, I'm glad we finally got to it. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you again soon for guitarlessons365.com.